Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys Ride. Today we are here at the Minneapolis Boat Show and Rob and I ran into one of our friends, Dave Bortner. Dave, nice to see you. Great to see you. Now as usual, Dave always managed to put something in the lot that we really like. So what do we have here today? This is a 1932 28 foot Hackercraft boat. Now, Hackercraft, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with that term. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about so what that John was. Ludwig Hacker was probably the preeminent naval architect in America okay. of the 20th century. He was an wow. incredibly talented well, man. Has to seen the boat. And uh, the the bottom designs provide an absolutely exquisite ride, better I think than any of the other wood boats. Okay, of the that's era. saying a lot because you you've been in a lot. We've and been in a lot of them. A lot. Uh, and the beauty of them, of the design, the part above the water yeah. line that doesn't affect how it rides is also just extraordinary. Now we were talking a little bit earlier, but you say, you know, when you get in here and you floor it, how it, you know, typically a boat, you know, will rise up and back well, and will sink yes, down a little the, bit. The nose will come up and then come back down as it gets on plane. But the, the characteristic of the hacker boats is that they rise more or less level up on plane out of the water. It's a very strange experience. It'd be a very experience. strange, yeah. If you're used to all other boats, right. let's right. say. Right, yeah. so, uh, well, this would be a credit to his engineering, right? Absolutely. Um, so what does it have for uh, a motor? Is it the original motor? It's the original motor to the boat. It's a 1932, obviously, Scripps, flathead V12. It's 825 cubic inches. Wow over a thousand foot pounds of torque <laughs> and uh, it's about a 2400 rpm terminal velocity engine wow so the the boats of this era the way that you made them go fast was with lots of displacement lots of torque not so much about horsepower but it's about the ability to turn a really big propeller Okay, so, you know, on a boat like this, just out of curiosity, what would be sort of a, a, a top speed on Well, that? this is a 45 to 50 mile an hour boat. Holy buckets. And it's a, that too is a strange sensation because the low RPM of the engine yeah. doesn't sound like you're going Boy, fast. Yeah. It sounds like you're sounds busting along like you're, so the shore. It's a, it's, it's a, a, you don't really get the sense of right. the speed. Man, let's let's step back here and take a look at the prop for a minute because you sure. say that they, they're in general they're just bigger. Okay, so propellers are measured in diameter. Okay, by what is called pitch. Right, the twist. And if you can visualize the prop moving through the water, mm -hmm. pitch is the number of inches the propeller moves forward in one revolution. Okay. So this is a 17 inch diameter by 21 inch pitch. And so that's a, if we think of the normal, let's say 1950s Chris Craft 17 foot boat, the propeller on that is about 13 inches in diameter by 13 inches pitch. Okay, so, so this is way this is bigger. really big. But it's it's about the performance at relatively low RPM. Because I mean, that, that would be a really weird sensation, 2400 RPM and going, you know, 45 miles an hour. It, yes, it's, a, I mean, it's that's, an interesting sensation. That is weird. We'll have to do it sometime. We will. <laughs> Maybe this summer it'll, Maybe be, up, this it'll summer. be up at the... Uh, well, we'll have, it, we'll have it at uh, some the various Diamond Classic Boat Show? Yes, for sure, in Alexandria. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. And if you haven't seen that show, folks, you got to come see the boats in the water working. All right. So let's go back up. Let's talk about this, uh, I always call it the mother-in-law compartment. Right. Or the, the kid seat. All right. So this has been um, refurbished to its original specs. That's correct. Yes. So... You know, the the it would have had the green vinyl. I'm assuming that's vinyl. It's leather. What's it called? It's leather. Leather. Yes. It's green leather. Ooh. Step up in class. Well, that were 30s. That's what there was. It was either leather or cloth, and cloth okay. doesn't work well, in a boat. No. So. Okay. 
you do have uh, a little bit of storage back here, right, in the side? Yes, uh, there are glove boxes, if you will. Okay. And, and usually those are used for uh, lines, mooring lines. When you're underway, you don't have the lines tied onto the boat, usually. Okay. And then this mm, bell house, this is the light, the rear light? No, that's the fuel fill. Well, that's the fuel fill. Oh, okay, the cap just cap rotates just, up. Yes. Okay. And were there um, any back lights on these? It's right there. Oh, right at the top of the pole. Yes. Nicely hidden. <laughs> so, I mean, e e e even, the, even the glass top is decorative. It is. I it mean, is. it's not it's, just a glass yes. top. Wow. Okay. We saw the exhaust coming out the back. Yes. What are these vents? There's two on this side, two on the other side. Those ventilate the engine compartment. Okay. And so that's when, the, when the boat's underway, the forward facing scoops take in the air, it flows through okay. the engine compartment and then out the aft facing Man, scoops. I, lo I love this sort of, uh, it rem reminds me of a ladder, I guess, the handles to open up the uh, hatch to get at the engine. Yes, it's kind of a uh, dual purpose to, to make it easier to open the hatches, but then it's also something to hold on to if you're crawling back and, back forth, and forth between the forward cockpits and the aft cockpit. So the center part between the two railings is where you would walk or crawl. Or crawl, yeah. Okay, unless you were docked and then you could, you have these nice rubber steps that are right there. Right. The, the trailer is still stacked with the Hackercraft label. Is this actually a trailer that was sold with the boat? No. Okay. There really weren't trailers in the 30s. Okay. The, the boat would have been delivered by rail to the boat dealership. Okay. And then the boat would have been come and gone from the water through a marina, okay. if you will. Okay. Okay. Um, so the the there was no need for trailers okay. in the 30s. Not really until after World War II. Okay. When boating came became more democratized and the boats became smaller and things. That's that interesting. You could, I've never I never thought about that side of boat history. Yeah, things that you could tow behind a car. Obviously, in the 30s, you there was nothing to, right, right. You weren't going to tow this behind a car. Um, so the the boats were handled by professionals on whatever body of water you, you were on. on, and they would take it in and take it out. Take for it you in and take year. it out and winterize it and store it and all that. All right. So tell us about the wood. I mean, this is just exquisite. Yes, and what you're looking at is mahogany. Okay. Uh, the framing beneath, behind the mahogany, is white oak. Okay. And mahogany is particularly suitable for marine use because it's very rot resistant. Okay. But also takes a finish beautifully, a stain and, and a consistent color throughout the grain as opposed to, let's say, cedar, okay. which is also a good boat building wood. but it doesn't finish as well. So usually if cedar is used in boats, it's painted. Okay, interesting. Oh, uh, this is a beautiful, I mean, the grain on this is just crazy. Uh, the, the, the stain on the top of it is just, now I think you guys actually applied the last coat of stain on here. Or, or the most recent coats of varnish. Varnish, we, we yeah, did, we yes. It is, it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I always amaze me when you look at the curve on these boats. I mean, it goes at the top from leaning out to the back to leaning in. Yes. I mean, it, it's... And there, if you stop and look at that, and particularly the sides of the boat, there isn't a place where the wood is flat. It's curved. It's everywhere. Everywhere. Top to bottom, left all to the right. Way, top to bottom, front to back. And then, of course, side to side, it's all curved. Man. You know, it's, it's, it's really a rolling piece of art. It is. I mean, it's a but it's a piece a, of art you get to experience by driving it. Absolutely right. So so is this particular boat, well, I mean, is it water ready? I mean, can yes, it be used? Yes, it could go on the water tomorrow. Okay. And that's, you know, one of the things we like about, you know, our acquaintance with you, Dave. We've learned a lot about classic boats. And you also have that show in Alexandria. Yeah, Diamond uh, uh -huh. Classic Boat Show, right? where we get to see these boats in the water going, and we get to ride them, we get to experience them. Yes. And that is, that, that, I mean, to me, that's one of the fun things is, it's a great museum piece. Yes. But if you can actually use it, that, that's a whole other different well, level. That's the, we, we love that about most of our customers, our 
people who use their boats. Yeah. And um, the, once the boat is restored by us, it's really important that it gets used to keep everything lubricated and working and, yeah. and to uncover any small problems that you might have so that we can address them before they become big problems. And um, if, a, if a boat is restored and then just sits, entropy begins immediately. Yeah, and they have to be used they to, have to, to be, used be kept up, and, really. Yes. So, you know, you do lots of, well, your company, Freedom Boat Service, does uh, amongst other things, a lot of boat restoration. Yes. And I would call it high-end boat restoration. It's, I mean, this th this is incredible. You didn't redo this particular boat from the ground up. We did not redo this the first time, no. Okay. It, it had, uh, actually it's a boat that I've been acquainted with for over 50 years. Okay. And it was one of the boats that, that made me get interested in vintage boats along with my father. Okay. Uh, we, my father and I knew the gentleman who owned it um, in the 70s. Okay. And uh, became friends with him. And of course he, he was uh, elderly at the time and got too elderly to use the boat and he sold it and it went to Michigan. Uh, and languished okay. uh, and required a complete restoration by the oh, really? third it? owner. Okay, so you did that? No, we did not do that. Okay. That was actually done in Florida. Okay. And then uh, the gentleman who had the restoration done decided he wanted to sell it and he came to us to sell it for him. Okay. And we placed it with a customer of ours who has a number of boats from us and just can't use them all and has decided this is the one that he's gonna thin out of the herd. Okay. Wow, what a what an amazing piece of history. Yes. And and and, and, and craftsmanship. Let's let's walk up here for a minute and talk about the uh, the passenger compartment in the back. Or in the middle, I guess, the Ford yes. middle. So what so what is this designed for? Seat four? Three? Uh, three very comfortably yeah. four. I mean it's like possibly. a couch. Yes. Now I, I did notice when I was up in there earlier, I mean you got some storage cubbies in the in the front, but you've got a on the floor. Yeah. It looked like you either had a button or something. Is that there is a lift, a, okay. a pull, so that that floorboard can come out. But it's just for service access service to the access. bilge of the boat. Okay, that that's kind of what I figured it mm -hmm. was for. Okay, now I notice you've got snaps right here that would be for a top. Yes. So, so this has a, a Dietrich convertible top. Oh, really? To oak bows and uh, I've seen the fabric. Dietrich tops before. Yes. I mean, they're they're uh, wow, they're nice. Okay, so yes, to go but up here it's and not the the tops are absolutely gorgeous but they are not really conducive to Taking it easily off. using the boat. Okay. So most of They're our short, customers, they? yes, they to, are short. To, to kind of get in. You have to put it down to get in and out of the boat okay. and then put it up. And then in order to get into the engine, you, you have to put the top up and release the back end of the top. So it's a... So it's, something that's better left just sitting on... It's a something. show... Show piece. Piece. Okay. But for people who really use the boats, they usually end up in the garage. I had the opportunity to crawl into one last year mm -hmm. that had that top yes. on there. And it was literally sort of dive through the window. I mean, step in. But I mean, it was not easy is what I'm saying. Right. Man. Okay. Up in the front here, um, your, the steering wheel looks like a, like, like a Model T. That is correct. And you've so got the, all of the vintage boat manufacturers, Hackercraft, Garwood, Chris Craft, Belle Isle, were all in the St. Clair River area okay. in Michigan. And it was an interesting confluence of the advancements in the automotive industry happening in Detroit, which is just a short distance from the St. Clair River yep. area, and the fact that the St. Clair River is U.S., Canada, and so there, the automotive uh, advancement was happening very rapidly and there was a need for fast boats to go back and forth across the river. Well, 32, well, 32 I, that was kind of after that. I, I think we can say bootlegging pushed the automotive industry in, that in uh, interesting directions. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, you've got, is that like a, I'm assuming you've, there's a throttle lever on the steering wheel. Yes. And there's so a, like a Spark Advance is the other one? This, likewise, 1932 is a little bit late for Spark Advance. So okay. this is throttle and choke. Throttle and choke. Okay. And then uh, now, right just to the right of the steering wheel, I, I can see where the key is, but there you've got a lever next to it. Or yes. Is it two no, it's two levers and a key. Two levers and a key. The what key is, is the ignition on and off. Okay. And it's then, not the actual start. It's, it's just not the, the start. It's okay. just the on and off. Okay. Power on, power off. And then the the flip levers mm -hmm. are lights. One is okay. for the navigation lights. One is for the dash lights. Okay. And then, so if you turn the key, then how would you start? What, what was actually initiated the battery to get started? There's a button in the floorboard. Okay, like like, like the car, some cars had. Like okay. some cars had, yeah. Okay, and then uh, you've got a little pull button next to those switches. Mm -hmm. That would have been. For, that's actually not a pull. It's a twist. Oh, it's a twist, and that uh, adjusts the level of the dash lights. Oh, how bright they are. Really? They are. Yeah. Oh, and then you've got gauges. So you've got. Yeah. I mean, is this the gauges that would have come with it? Oh, absolutely! Wow. Absolutely. Well, they look but brand new. They're, well, of course. They do because them. they've been made to look yeah. brand new, uh, both internally and the visual. And, and, and the, yeah. wow. Um, and these instruments, back to the automotive yep. advancement, are Stuart Warner instruments, custom built for Hackercraft. Interesting. Uh, but there again, Stuart Warner was in the business of building instruments for primarily the automotive companies, but also did so for the boat manufacturers, Hackercraft, uh, Garwood, and Chris Craft. Okay. Uh, but all different, all specific. There are specific Chris Craft right. styles and specific Hackercraft but same, styles. Same guy making them. Same manufacturer. Yeah. All right. Uh, underneath in the front here, was there a storage area or a sleeper berth? There, there, no, it's not big enough to put a sleeper berth in, but there is storage that's accessible through a bulkhead in the front of the floor. Okay, all right, so you'd have that. You've got, of course, got your nav lights. I love it. I love the design of those. Yes, absolutely you know, beautiful. Just the, I mean, everything is so artistic. Um, now, the big hook in the middle of the front. Yes. What was that used for? That is the lift ring. And when you had it so, in the boathouse? Or? Well, when you had it in the boathouse, when you had it at the marina, remember, no trailers. Yes, yes. So they lifted the boats by the lift rings, rolled them out of the water, and set them on a cradle on wheels, usually. Oh, okay. And then were able to move them around. Man, what a... It's hard for me to imagine anything that's anchored strong enough to hold something this heavy. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, they are. Right. Um, okay. And uh, then this, this windshield also folds open. Oh, from the bottom? From the bottom. Okay, now upward. that I'm here, I can see a little rubber seal yes, at the bottom. Seal the seal. Wow. And we really love the look of this windshield that's specific to this model and this year. Um, it's beautiful. I love it's it. A, it's curved. It's a it's kind of, a, we refer to it as the gangster, roadster kind of windshield. <laughs> I like it. That is very nice. So, you know, on, on the list of uh, all-time favorite boats, Dave, where does this one rank? This is pretty high up there. This might For, be one of your favorites. This is definitely one of my favorites. The The lines and the proportions of this boat are just exquisite, and it qualifies as among the rarest of the rare in that there are only three of these boats that exist. And only two of them restored. Only two of them have been restored. And only one of them has been restored by you. Correct. You know, it's amazing, Dave, your, your knowledge and your, your ability, company's ability to take something this old and put it back to original. Because, I mean, like as we said, a lot of these are found in skeletal frames and there's not a lot left when, they, when yes. they're first discovered. Absolutely. And so to be able to understand with the wood type and the, you know, I mean, just all that detail and then be able to pull it off. I mean, that's just, you know, it's nice for the rest of us. So thank you on behalf of the rest of the love history well, bringing these back. We, we very much enjoy it, and there's a huge sense of satisfaction. Oh, there's got to be when we get finished. It's it's a little frenetic through the process, but 
if we have time to just take a step back once we get finished, it's it's pretty it's pretty neat, satisfying it? oh, to see be. the end result. Well, Dave, thank you once again for sharing your knowledge of you know these boats. What what an interesting history, what an interesting time. Yes, uh, and, and the you know the the, the car parts, uh, you know the airplane parts. I mean everything just all put together. Um, and then to have it brought back to life this is super. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate Wonderful it. Wonderful to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for watching.